Hello and welcome to today's video. So we're in the 2013 Ford Escape. It's got, uh, looks like 90,233 miles and it's time to change the battery on it. <clears throat> uh, currently we are sitting at, uh, yeah, Ford conveniently, like it won't start. Nothing. Uh, Ford conveniently. I can't even get the display to come on anymore. Okay. <laughs> Battery's dead. Um, we're at, uh, can you read that? Hold on. Does that help? Yeah, we're at like five volts. Yeah. Six volts. It's recovering. Let's try to start it. Nothing. Won't even try. So I've been uh, jump starting the car. <laughs> um, Yeah, it's not happy. <laughs> oh, wait, there the dash came on. Uh, yeah, see, they don't put a voltmeter on. There's no voltmeter. So, I've got this hooked up, but yeah, it's definitely dead. <clears throat> it's got what? what are, we're in 2019, it's 2013, so six years. Ford also conveniently locates the battery underneath here. I took the cover off. Um, yeah, so anytime you have one of these remote grounds, because the ground is way back there, yeah, that's not a good sign. So, in order to change the battery, we have to take, well, there's two ways you can do it. You can remove the air cleaner, but you end up with this, there's the cable that comes from the fuse box out through here that's in the way and you have to cut all the zip ties and it's a pretty stiff cable and gets in the way because you gotta take essentially the front of the battery box cover comes off see how it's slotted here and then so you gotta remove this unplug all of this disconnect all the sensors and then uh, pull this whole assembly out uh, to get there and then you can take the battery box cover off and then you gotta come underneath here and undo these little tiny bolts that hold the strap on there and there's not that much room in there to get to them but eventually you get all that out and you can slide the battery out kind of work it out this way or alternatively <laughs> remove the windshield wipers <laughs> unbolt this guy and then pull these little clips out that run along here and then uh, this top assembly will come off. And I think there's some screws back there too that you have to pull out. And then that makes this whole section come off, which allows you to actually get to the battery and just get to everything and pull it straight out, which is significantly easier. So that's, that's the route I'm gonna go. <clears throat> so I don't have to you know, undo all this and try to get this all, all these hose clamps and stuff, and get it all sealed back up. Yeah, because this has a turbo in it. It's the uh, EcoBoost version. <coughs> but yeah, so um, you know, make it easy. And while we're harping on, on Ford, um, this car also has a coolant leak. And to fill the coolant, they put the cap underneath here. Look at that. So... <laughs> so you need like a... Uh, funnel, a tube, and a thing in order to fill it. But anyways, yeah. Remove the cap from windshield wiper. Next, 15 millimeter socket. You don't want to move it, you just kind of want to, like you don't want to crank on it because you don't want to move the position. So you're just going to do one of these. Just push it against itself. There you go. Hey, that guy's on there pretty good. So what I had to do is I took the ratchet here and just kind of put it underneath there and, and pulled on it. 
and that was enough to to bust it off. Stone. And then I was able to pop it off. <laughs> it was on there pretty good. Okay, next I gotta remove all these metal, what appeared to be one-time use clips. So I got little teeth on them. Let's go through and take those all off. Bite really good. I don't want to lose these things. Here, I'm gonna put the phone down. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, just take all of those ones off. Okay, with all the clips out, I guess the next thing to do is we just lift up on this. And there are plastic clips in the back that should pop. We'll see. I have bad luck with plastic clips. They tend to always break. Can you see them? They're in there somewhere. Oh, there they are. Hey. Okay. okay, I'm gonna maybe put a screwdriver and see if I can pop this back there to that plastic clip back there. Hey. I'll be back. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad. The, there are plastic clips to right here. They go in those all the way across there. Uh, it actually came out pretty easy. It, it didn't. You just have to kind of pry up on it really hard, and they'll they all start popping. Once you get one to pop, it like kind of zippers along. So that wasn't too bad. <laughs> all right. So next, it looks like we've got some screws. Uh, there's one there, one there. There's probably. I don't know. Uh, maybe it just sits down in there. It looks might only be those four screws. We gotta take uh, this guy off first, and then the screws over here. So we'll do that next. We're getting there. It's the home stretch. We can almost almost see the battery now. <laughs> Eight millimeter. Yeah, you get the idea. It's unscrewing that, and then that one. I'll, hopefully those are the only two, or four. Torx. It, it says T20, but I think it's actually an S2, but whatever. <laughs> Gotta get this guy out without dropping screws down. <laughs> okay, so it was just the four screws, and then I took this guy off the brake fluid reservoir. And it looks like we're disconnected. We just slide it on out. Doesn't look like there's any clips or anything holding that one in. Just the four screws. Yep, all right. I'll go need two hands for that one. I'll get that out and we'll see what the next step. And then I think we're up to the battery, finally. Okay, finally, we are to the battery. <laughs> so this cover, the back cover should come off. Uh, looks like it's our friend's plastic clips again. Let's see if we can pop this off without breaking anything. Nope, it's on there pretty good. Hey, we're gonna cut. <laughs> I'll, I'll be back. Hold on. 
Uh, okay, the, the cover comes off easier than I thought. It slides off. But, holy cow, what is this? That is some serious battery corrosion. What is going on here? Um, yeah, I, I'm guessing, are we leaking acid? I mean, the positive terminal's fine. What on earth is going on there? Well, that's probably why the battery's shot. <laughs> huh. That's the main... Yeah, wow. Yeah, I don't know what to think of that. Uh, also looks pretty nasty to, to take out. How's this even come out? Do we just... I think we just unscrew this, right? Looks like it kind of clamps the two together. Some kind of thing. Wow. Huh. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> but at least we can get the battery out now. See? I don't know why they make it so difficult. Okay, so I got the I got the positive terminal off. It came off pretty easy. The negative terminal, I've unscrewed it just like I did this one, and it is it's corroded on there pretty good. I took the strap out. I've been wiggling it around. But uh, it, it's not coming off. So I think what I'm going to do is I don't know where these wires go. Go down there somewhere. It's probably not going to be easy to... But uh, I can at least take... I think I'm going to undo this. This guy doesn't look like it's too much trouble to undo. And then that'll give me some leverage to really crank on this thing. The problem is it comes in like this. And it looks like it goes through there and then around. I wonder if this is a current sensor. What? I don't know what this, this little thing is on here. <laughs> the other thing that I noticed. <laughs> Can you read this? It says, scrap if dropped. <laughs> for tough <laughs> if you drop it nah just throw it away that's the windshield wiper motor uh, <laughs> uh anyways yeah it's funny because uh may i might have to replace this whole thing okay by removing this from the ground strap on the car that got me enough leverage to break it loose. But I still can't get it to come off. So I had to fry on it with a screwdriver or something. It's been there pretty good. At least it's broken loose. <laughs> Anyways, okay, hold on. Ha <laughs> ha, success. So that took a lot of prying, but uh, man, okay. So I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking we might, the battery might be cracked. Maybe that post cracked, but um, <laughs> this is pretty bad. Uh, I don't know if I can clean this up. Uh, it does look like I can unplug. It looks like there's a connector on the end here. And it looks like we've got a little weather pack connector. So I'll pop that off. I have no idea what this thing is. It takes two wires. Well, I guess I get. I guess I could use the actual ground. So it could be three. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's a current sensor, or maybe a little relay or something in there. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we can get the battery out now. Um, if I unplug this, I think I could take this whole thing out, maybe try cleaning it with some baking soda to see how bad it actually is. Uh, we definitely have we definitely have battery acid. You can smell it. So I think, uh, I think that's why this battery is bad, is uh, we've been leaking. Yeah, that looks looks wet like this is just see how wet yeah yeah <laughs> yeah not good anyways uh see if i can clean that up uh if not i can go over to the ford dealership and see if they have whatever that is this whole assembly anyways uh yeah we'll see what happens Okay, well, I managed to get the connector out, but uh, 
it it's uh it's melted. This thing's been getting hot. Like the pins are screwed. I don't even know how this car is still running. I mean, I don't even know what this thing, this connector goes to, but it is melted. Or got eaten by battery acid, one of the two. <laughs> um, yeah. That's not good. So, looks like we're gonna need a new one of these, and... Oh, that doesn't look... I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna go drive... I think I'm gonna go drive over to the Ford dealership and just buy a new one. <laughs> See if they've got one. Uh, yeah. I'll just replace this whole... This whole thing, and then maybe I can. Maybe they got this connector, mating connector. Fun stuff. <laughs> Ford. Uh. Well, anyway, it's got the battery out, and yeah, it looks like it's been leaking acid. So I have to clean all that out with some baking soda and water. Yeah, looks good <laughs> for quality. <laughs> As you can see, I've acquired a new uh, negative battery cable, which this apparently is a current sensor just from the, uh, if you look at how it's constructed, you got the battery terminal here and it goes into this piece of copper and it goes across here and then you can see they've got an insulator between the copper and the battery terminal so pretty sure this is a current shunt in here that's why it's just got the two terminals so this is uh, forty dollars from Ford from the dealership uh, I could not get this connector this uh, this guy is burned <laughs> it got hot enough to melt and they wanted, I think it was something like $800 for the um, front engine bay wiring harness, which contained this connector. And uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. So uh, the goal is to extract the two pins that are in here, because those should fit here. And then we'll solder some wires onto it, do some heat shrinking, and then I think we're just going to fill this entire cavity up with hot glue. <laughs> this will be our temporary solution, except it'll probably be permanent because I'm not going to ever hopefully have to change the battery again. I did get a, a new battery. Um, I did uh, also, I went to the auto parts stores. I went to uh, uh, O'Reilly, Napa, and advanced, none of them have this connector. And uh, they all wanted $160 for the battery. They have a $99 battery, but they don't stock it. You have to get the platinum one, which is $160. So I went over to Walmart and bought a, a Never Start brand battery. I think it's actually called an Ever Start, but you know, Never Start because it was $99. <laughs> so uh, $100 for the battery and $40 for this new cable. And uh, some time to make this connector. But uh, that's the current plan. We'll see how well it goes. So, as you can see, I've removed what I could of the pins, soldered some wires onto them, cleaned them up a bit, and put some heat shrink on them. Now, I gotta go back and look at the pictures, figure out which one goes where, stick them in there onto the pins, and then we're just gonna fill that up with. Uh, hot glue, and then I'll probably put some heat shrink over the whole thing, and we'll call it good. <laughs> then we'll go and splice these back into the existing harness wiring harness that's in the car. It sounds like a plan. Hopefully it works. Okay, welcome back. We have the finished, modified 
Uh, it's got a connector on there now, kind of. That's uh, it says wires. <laughs> but, uh, soldered wires onto the pins, put the pins in there, filled it with uh, hot glue, and then put uh, this outer heat shrink over everything, filled it with hot glue, and of course the hot glue makes the heat shrink shrink, and when it did it squished out some, so overestimated the amount, but uh, yeah, that should be sufficiently waterproof and making good connection. Uh, I ohmed it out. I expected that to actually be a current shunt. It is not. Um, it's not a current shunt. I would uh, It must be a Hall Effect uh, sensor instead. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's it's kind of interesting. Is um, that doesn't actually mean software version three point eight, does it? Because I think there's a microcontroller in there? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I'll go ahead and put it in the car and uh, solder, splice this back in, solder, heat shrink it, and uh, hopefully it should be good to go. Okay, so new battery installed, and we've got the uh, sensor spliced in. And ready to put it all back together. Exciting. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Okay, we've got the negative side bolted in. It's super tight. Not going anywhere. Um, I routed this back through here. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go through the gap instead of through the hole that was there before. Like it just kind of snuck in underneath the cover because it looks like that gap's got enough room for both cables there so pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be it just wasn't done right and we got the main ground strap reattached so it looks good yeah i think uh i think we're ready to put the positive terminal back on here and maybe Depending on how that's on there, really good. It's supposed to rip this, maybe? Yeah, apparently so. There you go. <clears throat> okay. Hopefully, nothing bad happens. Oh, there's some sparks. Make sure that's on there. And tighten this guy up. I don't know how tight it's supposed to be, so I just go until it feels like I'm going to break it. About there. Click. <laughs> yeah, it's on there pretty good. Okay. Well, I think we should try starting the car first. Make sure everything works before putting it all back together. That's probably a good idea. Okay, that's a good sign. We've got power. It now thinks it's 12.01 and uh, January 30th of 2013. But hey, let's see what she does. Hey, hey there's a sensor for the hood. Uh, and obviously all of my radio has been reset. Okay. No errors. Everything's still working. Nice. Okay. I think we're good to go. <laughs> hey. That my connector mod must be working because not complaining about oh look how bright the headlights are. Oh, yep. I think we're in business. Now I just gotta put all the parts back in. Yeah, shouldn't be too bad. Okay, sweet. Nice. <laughs> okay, so I've got the upper, whatever this is called, drip tray reinstalled. We got the brake fluid reservoir back on there. And I remembered to put the back battery cover on because if you forget that, 
good luck getting it back on. I also put the front one on because it's just easier to do while, while it's not, while that's open. But uh, yeah, that went back together pretty easily. So the only thing I worry about is all these little plastic clips now that I got to pop back in place. So for the next part, but uh, yeah, we've got uh, the supervisor over here. Hey, Jersey, what you doing? Yeah. She thinks she's going for a car ride, and that's why she's out here. She was whining at the door because she thinks she's going to go somewhere. She's like, hey, you're out in the garage. We should be going somewhere. Anyways. <laughs> okay, next, yeah, put the upper drip tray thing, whatever that's called, back on. Okay, upper part installed, and yes, it's really hard to get all the little plastic clips in there. I had to take it on and off like a few times because they, they get bent under. And um, I put all these back on, except I lost one. There's one down in there somewhere. I don't know where it's at. Um, so we're replacing this guy with... Uh, yeah, I mean, I would assume it's important to have all of them in there just because of how much the sink flexes. And I can see that moving. So I'm thinking it's about the same amount of tension. We'll just uh, pop these out and nobody will ever notice, right? <laughs> there we go. Perfect. <laughs> like new. <laughs> Okay, I think all that's left is putting the uh, windshield wipers back on. And then we're done. I think I have the windshield wipers back where they were before. Uh, they are actually not keyed, it's just splined. So um, hopefully if it, I'm going to go test them. And if they're off a little bit, then I'll, I can just readjust them and get them where they're supposed to be. Because they, they like park down underneath and then they move up when they're actually running. So I gotta make sure that's all in the right spot. But uh, yeah, looks like everything's good. Okay, windshield wiper test. And did they park? Yep, I think we're good. I think this is successful repair. I just gotta reset my clock and and on my radio stations, but yeah, <laughs> successful. Thanks for watching. Bye.